There are a few basic principles to time value of money. Return on investment over time is known as interest, while the actual baseline amount of an investment associated with the loan is known as the principal. Lenders loan money with the expectation of earning interest on the loan while also ensuring the return of their principal. Borrowers expect to receive funds in order to use them in their enterprise, but likewise expect to pay back the principal plus the interest that accrues over time. The interest rate is typically stated as a percentage of the principal that reflects the cost of borrowing money expressed in annual terms. For example, a $1,000 loan that carries a 6% stated rate of interest is expected to accrue $60 of interest each year the loan remains outstanding, or 6% of the principal amount. Therefore, after one year, the economic value of the investment would be $1,060, the original principal of $1,000 plus $60 of interest. If such an investment remained outstanding for another year, the total value would be $1,123.60 and not $1,120. The reason is because the 6% interest in year two would apply on the interest accrued and unpaid the previous year. This is known as compounding. Present value is what a certain amount of money in the future is worth now. Future value is what a certain amount of money now is worth in the future. If the rate of interest and compounding frequency are known, present value and future value can be calculated. There are many practical uses to understanding interest rates, present and future value. A common practical use is estimating funds needed for an individual to retire. If the amount that future retirees plan to invest now is known and they can estimate the rate of interest on their investment, they will know how much money they will have to use after retirement. A time value of money calculation is just a basic algebraic calculation. It can be solved as long as we know all but one variable. For example, we can solve for present value if we know future value, the number of years, and interest rate. We must know at least three of these four variables to solve for the missing fourth. The future value of a lump sum payment can be computed by multiplying the present value by one plus the interest rate elevated to the number of periods over which the interest will be compounded. For example, Sarah needs to have $40,000 to replace her car next year. She can earn 6% interest on her investment and she has just one year until she needs to purchase a new car. $40,000 is the future value, 6% is the interest rate, and one is the number of periods. Sarah would have to invest $37,736 today and earn 6% on her investment so that in one year she will have the $40,000 she needs to buy her car. In using the time value of money, it is always important to see if the answer achieved is reasonable. Since a sum of money in the future is nominally almost always more than a sum of money in the present, it makes sense that $40,000 a year from now will be worth slightly less at the present time. Assume that Sarah already has a relatively new car and plans to wait 10 years to buy a new one. She wants to have $40,000 set aside for the car and can earn 6% on her investment, which is her expected return each year. In this case, the compounding periods are 10, which reduces the present value to $22,336. These calculations can be done through a financial calculator, through a time value table, or by using software like Excel. Should you choose to use a table, you will need to find the row and column that match the number of periods and the interest rate. You can solve these problems either through present value tables or future value tables. When using a present value table, the table provides a factor of 0.558. Therefore, $40,000 10 years from now is simply $40,000 times 0.558. When using a future value table, the table provides a factor of 1.79085.
Therefore, $40,000 10 years from now is simply $40,000 divided by 1.79085. Keep in mind that depending on how many decimals are included in the present value or future value table used, the calculations may not match 100%. For example, if a present value is calculated using a present value table with five decimals, and an attempt is made to replicate the results using a future value table rounded to two decimals, the results may be off by a few dollars. This difference is due to the fact that the two tables are not using the same level of accuracy. Therefore, if tables are used, a consistent amount of decimals should also be used. The same process can be repeated if instead of solving for present value, future value is what we're solving for. For example, Robert has $100,000 in hand today and can invest his money for one year at an 8% rate of interest. Using the same time value formula, the computation shows that his money will be equal to $108,000 a year from now. Assume that Robert has $100,000 in hand today and can invest his money for 20 years at an 8% rate of interest. Using the same time value formula, his money will be equal to $466,096 20 years from now. When using a table, find the row and column that match the number of periods and the interest rate. These problems can be solved either through present value tables or future value tables. If a present value table is used, the table provides a factor of 0.215. Therefore, $100,000 20 years from now is simply $100,000 divided by 0.215. If a future value table is used, the table provides a factor of 4.66096. Therefore, $100,000 20 years from now is simply $100,000 multiplied by 4.66096. Again, keep in mind that depending on how many decimals are included in the present value or future value table used, the calculations may not match 100%. An annuity is a fixed regular payment paid in the same amount over a period of time. Annuities like lump sum payments can be measured at present value or at future value. Lottery winners are frequently given the choice of a single lump sum payment option or an annuity option. Obviously, personal characteristics affect this decision, but so does the time value of money. Suppose that Tom wins the lottery and is offered 40 annual payments of $100,000 or a lump sum of $1,800,000 payable immediately. Using the time value of money formula, Tom can determine the present value of the annuity to see whether the annuity or the immediate lump sum payment is worth more. In the formula for the present value of an annuity, PV stands for present value. N is the number of periods. I is the interest rate. PMT is the amount of money the annuity pays in each period. In Tom's case, the PMT or payment is $100,000. The number of periods is 40, and we assume a 5% market rate of interest for similar investments. The market rate of interest is the going interest rate for similar investments or loan. Calculating the present value of an annuity is called discounting. In Tom's case, the lump sum looks like the best option, since the present value of the annuity is only $1,715,909, well below the $1,800,000 of the cash option. When using a table, find the row and column that match the number of periods and the interest rate. The table provides a factor of 17.15909. The payment amount is multiplied by the factor to arrive at the present value of $1,715,909.